Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you believe in Jesus? It's a simple question, and it's one that I know you would answer yes, but allow me to explain a little bit more what I mean when I say Jesus. Do you believe in the real Jesus? Crucified, risen, ascended, the the Jesus who we meet living and breathing and walking and talking in the four Gospels? Or do you believe in clay model Jesus? The Jesus whom we've squished and formed until he looks like we think Jesus should look. Crucified, risen, and ascended, sure, but with the rough edges smoothed out. Jesus made so that he fits in and he doesn't offend. And he's rather bland and generic so that he can be acceptable to all. I know that all of you would say, I want to believe in the real Jesus. But is it possible that sometimes it's clay model Jesus who comes and makes an appearance in your life? I think that maybe that is the case sometimes. Jesus, clay model, from what I hear, from what I see, Jesus with the rough edges smoothed out. Jesus who isn't so offensive, who wasn't really so serious about the fires of hell, or at least not serious about anybody winding up there. Jesus who isn't so utterly concerned with your everyday life, he's rather hands-off. Jesus who's there to offer you a pick-me-up in that nice, warm, fuzzy language, smile, God loves you. Jesus, who is like a friend to give you a hug when you need one, and who repeats to you this baptized version of an ancient belief in fate, saying, God has a plan for you. Everything's going to be all right. That's clay model Jesus, squished and formed until he offers us something like a version of pop psychology with just enough Christianese to make us think it's Christ. And I would like to take clay model Jesus today and squish him back into a lump because that's what clay is supposed to be. Use it to make pots, not religious leaders. And look instead at the real Jesus. The one whose rough edges aren't smoothed out. The one that we meet in John 8 who seems to me to be a little bit feisty and argumentative. And if there's anything I've noticed about Jesus, it's this. It's at those very moments in the Gospels where he catches us off guard, where he doesn't behave like we think Jesus should behave, where he is harsh or cold or stern. It's precisely those moments that we need to pay the most attention to Jesus. For that's where we meet the real Jesus. And and when we meet the real Jesus we discover that there is more love in Jesus' coldness than in the warm, fuzzy platitudes that are shared. And there is more real comfort to be had in what might seem like harshness or sternness or feistiness from Jesus than in bland and generic platitudes recited a thousand times over. Look at this real Jesus who made real claims about himself and at least we can say this much about those Jews who were arguing with Jesus. They didn't try to squish and mold him into something he wasn't. They realized they couldn't do that and so they took Jesus seriously. They took him so seriously, in fact, that they came to the conclusion, which is not at all senseless or ridiculous, that Jesus was crazy. Because, after all, it's in John 8 where Jesus comes out, cuts to the chase, and says it, I am God. I am the same one, the same I am who is at the burning bush 
with Moses. That's me, and whoever listens to me, whoever believes in me, is never, ever going to die. That's why they said to him, aren't we right in saying you're a Samaritan and demon-possessed? What other choice did they have? You and I, who know that Jesus is not crazy or demon-possessed, we should listen up. For here in the midst of Jesus' feistiness, we find profound comfort that's tied to exactly who Jesus is, tied to the fact that he is I am, God from all eternity and to all eternity. Listen carefully to what he says. I love the way that he goes about this, dropping a bombshell on his detractors, talking about Abraham as if Jesus knew Abraham, was on speaking terms with him. Because the real Jesus is on speaking terms with Abraham and always has been. That's why he said, your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. And how could Jesus possibly have said that about a man who died some 2,000 years ago unless he was there with him? Think about that. How incredible that is. Our real living, breathing Jesus talks about Abraham like he was with Abraham when Abraham set out from his hometown of Ur of the Chaldeans and traveled to a foreign and distant land because Jesus was with him then. He talks about Abraham like he knew what Abraham was thinking and feeling in the days of his life on this earth because Jesus did know what Abraham was thinking and feeling. Jesus was the one who was there next to Abraham as Abraham stared up at the stars in the sky and was told, count them if you can, so shall your descendants be. Though at the time he was already old and childless. Jesus is the one who was with Abraham when the mighty promise was given to him, through your descendants all of the families of the earth will be blessed. Though he had no descendants to speak of. Jesus was there with Abraham and knew just what kind of doubts and despair Abraham was tempted with and faced. And Jesus was the one who held before his eyes in Abraham's darkest moments a thought that gave him joy. The thought of seeing the day of that promise God had made to him fulfilled. This is the Jesus that you and I believe in, right? And so this is the Jesus who would say the very same thing about you. And it is no small thing, is it, to have a God who knows you by name and who understands just what you are feeling and thinking and experiencing. Would not this Jesus say the same thing to you, about you? Here is my daughter, troubled, plagued, mourning at the grave of a loved one, and yet she rejoices at the thought of the day when I will return and all flesh will rise. Here is my son, badgered and tempted by Satan to bleak despair, and yet clinging to this hope that I am coming back to make all things new. If you want comfort that goes far beyond mere platitudes, bland, generic sayings, find your comfort here. In Jesus who can say, 
I am on speaking terms with a man who's been dead for 2,000 years. And I know just what it was like all the days of his life. And forgive me for sounding like an infomercial, but wait, there's more. Because your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my days, only the first half of what Jesus said. The second half is just as great. He saw it and was glad. Abraham, who had to wait some 2,000 years after they laid him in a stone tomb, Jesus speaks of him like he's not dead because he isn't dead. Jesus speaks of him seeing that day after all those years fulfilled. The day that Abraham in the days of his life could only long for, could only hold to, in joy and hope. Well, one day, so many years later, that day finally came. And Abraham was there to see it. Jesus tells us, Abraham saw it. The day when I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who appeared to Moses in the burning bush, was born beneath the starry hosts in the city of David. Abraham witnessed the I am growing up in wisdom and stature. Abraham was filled with joy as Jesus went about his ministry and work. And Abraham was filled with greater joy on the day when I am was handed over and sentenced to death. And the sun hid its face because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was hanging on a cross dying. And Abraham rejoiced when three days later I am erupted from the tomb to prove once and for all decisively that he will never ever be I was, but is always I am. Abraham saw it all, though he died and had to wait 2,000 years. And Abraham is still rejoicing at the thought of that day when Jesus will return and bring to life all who have died in him. And someday, Abraham is going to see that happen. Someday, you are going to see that happen too. Whether it's 2,000 years, or it's been some 4,000 for Abraham now, or more. The promise you have is that the real Jesus, the great I Am, is not your God just for this life. He's your God forever. For as many days, until that day, when you will see his day and your hope will be fulfilled and you with Abraham will rejoice. I find in this real Jesus comfort that goes so far beyond that kind of bland stuff that's passed off as Jesus' comfort nowadays. And I find it right here in the midst of John 8, not a place that we're accustomed to turning to, but that's just the way it works with the Jesus who really is, our real, living, breathing Jesus, who understood that what was on the line here was who he is. After all, he was even challenged, who do you think you are? And so he made it clear to us so that we might have hope and comfort and joy. That this same Jesus, Abraham's God still to this very day, 
is our God and ever will be the great I am. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.